Praise the Lord, church. A little sparse. I don't know if that's due to the weather or the time change or both there. But I'm glad to be able to be in the house this morning to worship him. Could you stand? Let's open with prayer. Father, we are so thankful for this day that you provide us with, God, for a place that we can come, a place that we can assemble to lift you up, to magnify you, to praise you. I ask, God, that this service be under your authority, under your anointing. Move and touch and minister as you will this day. As we lift you up and glorify you, be with us, we pray, in your name, in Jesus' name we pray. And let the church say amen. And you may be seated. thankful that he rose for us. Amen. Provided us a, a, a way to eternal life. Amen. If you're able, we ask that you stand. We'll go to prayer this morning. We have several prayer requests. Uh, we ask that you pray for Sister Denise Brainerd. She's having some severe pain in her heel and uh, is trying to avoid surgery. So we want the Lord to touch there so she doesn't have to. Amen. Uh, lift up a young man by the name of Colby. It's the brother of Sister Nikki Seitz. Uh, he was diagnosed with an aggressive cancer. He's only 21 years old. And continue to remember that family, and, and especially Nikki's father, because this is very difficult on him because he also lost a, another son at the age of 21. So this, this is difficult for the family to remember them. Several requests for healing. Uh, lift up Michelle Brockman, Sister Kayla LaMontagne, Sister Simone isn't feeling well this morning, and continue to remember Jennifer Spencer. We know a Lord. We know a, we know a healer. We know a provider. He knows the spoken and the unspoken. All those with unspoken are signified by this raising of hands as we go to prayer this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. We appreciate you and we love you for the mercy and grace that you have bestowed upon us. Lord, we come to you this day, coming to the foot of your cross as we lift our burdens to you. Lord, you make our burdens light. You are a provider, a comforter, a healer. 
Lord, we ask that you touch each and every situation, the spoken and the unspoken, Lord, as we come to you. We know that you are you are there. You listen and you hear. Oh, Lord, just the fun, just the touch of your garment, Lord, as we come and approach you. Jesus, we love you and appreciate you. You are worthy of all praise. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, your will be done in each and each of these situations, Lord, that a testimony might come forth, Lord, how once again you have delivered, Lord, how you have lifted up. Amen. And the congregation says, in Jesus' name, you may be seated. Several announcements over this morning. Uh, choir practice tomorrow night, 6.30. Tuesday, we have our corporate prayer and fasting. Uh, prayer here at the church at 6.30. Wednesday, Bible study, Kids Power Hour at 7 p.m. here at the church. And then next Sunday, Sunday evening at 6.30, we have a special guest speaker, the Reverend and Sister Ryan and Kirsten, Kirsten Paul, uh, missionaries to Spain, will be joining us for a special service. So invite somebody, uh, come out and expect a good move from the Lord there. Amen. If our ushers will come forth at this time, our offering scripture today comes from Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. And it says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. Lord Jesus, we ask that you bless this offering, Lord, for the gift and for the giver. Let it go forth for the furtherance of your kingdom, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.
Amanda had her song list picked out, and I said, hey, I'm singing that tomorrow morning. She goes, oh. I said, the Lord must really want us to sing this song. So we're going to repeat what we sang in the Spanish service last night, and it's hallelujah for the cross. I want to give myself, because he gave everything for me. He is worthy of my feeble attempt of sacrifice. I would be hopeless without your good.
was a prisoner, now I'm not. And with your blood you, you bought my freedom. Hallelujah for the cross. Well, ain't you thankful for the cross of Calvary? Ain't you thankful for that blood? Hallelujah. He has bought our freedom. He has set the captives free. Amen. He's an on-time God. I'm so glad that he saved me. Amen. Because I'm hopeless without him. There's nothing any of us could do. Amen. If it was not for the Lord, if it was not for the cross, for the blood, Amen. And for the death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. Such a sweet presence of the Lord in this place. Amen. We will be in Psalms, the 40th chapter. Psalms 40, starting in verse 1 and 4. Give everybody honor. You made it here. You set your clocks up. Amen. The snow didn't hinder you. Amen. It's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Such a presence in the prayer room this morning. Amen. God is so good. Ain't nothing like just being in his glory. But Psalm 40, verses 1 through 4, and the word of the Lord. He did patiently. For the Lord. And he inclined to me, and he heard my cry. He also brought me out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Amen. Many will see it in fear. And will trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. And does not respect the proud. Nor such as turn aside to lies. Amen. I waited patiently on the Lord. Amen. And he inclined to me. He heard my cry. Amen. For a few moments this morning. I just want to speak on this subject. Of testimonies and trials of testimonies and trials. Amen. With the help of the Lord, we'll put our Bibles down and just ask the Lord to to bless this word and help us to receive his word this morning. Amen. Lord, we love and we praise you. Lord, we thank you for your presence we feel, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for your touch, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your blood. We thank you for Calvary, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for a heart and a mind to be here this morning, Lord to be in your presence, Lord, to hear your word, Lord, to feel you, Lord. Lord, that we might have that opportunity, Lord, to give ourselves to you wholly, completely unto you, Lord Jesus. You are that way maker, Lord. I pray, Lord, for everyone, Lord, this morning, Lord, to have a heart to receive, a mind to understand, Lord, a ear to hear, Lord, that we can leave here different than what we came, Lord Jesus, drawn near to you, Lord, giving ourselves over to you, Lord, holy, Lord, fully, Lord. Lord, let us not just be hearers of your word, Lord, but let us be doers, Lord. Let us apply this word, Lord. We have a testimony, Lord. Lord, as we continue to encourage ourselves in you, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for your word, Lord. We just thank you for being so good. In Jesus' name we pray and let everybody say amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise as we're seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The 40th Psalm begins with a testimony. In it, David recounts how the Lord delivered him from a seemingly impossible circumstance. Amen. It begins like this. I waited patiently for the Lord. I waited patiently for the Lord. Sometimes the hardest thing we can do is simply wait upon the Lord. But David says, says this, he says, let me testify of the goodness of God. 
I waited on the Lord. There were times when I felt like I was getting nowhere. There were times when I felt my situation was only getting worse. Amen. There were times when I wanted to throw in the towel and just quit and walk away. But I waited upon the Lord. I patiently waited upon the Lord. Let's be honest. Most of us know how to wait on God. Amen. Because there are many situations that's the only thing we can do. Amen. It's just wait upon the Lord. But few of us know what it is to, to wait patiently upon the Lord. We want to do something right now. We want to be reactive to our circumstances. Amen. We want to plead our case to rise up against our opposition and take back what we have lost. Amen. But the Lord says wait. Because in our minds we have to be doing something in order for something to be actually happening. It takes faith to believe, like the song says, that the Lord never stops working on our behalf. Even when I don't see Him, He's working. Amen. Even when I don't hear Him, He's working. When I don't feel Him, He's working. Even when I don't see my situation changing, He's working. Even when it seems as if nothing at all is happening around me, the Lord God Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, He looks out for me. The Ancient of Days, the Lord mighty in battle, the King in all His splendor, He is fighting for us. Amen. So David says, I waited patiently for the Lord. That's all I could do was wait patiently. So David says, I waited patiently. I wrestled with my doubts, but still I waited. I struggled with my own insecurities, but still I waited. I questioned my place in God, yet still I waited. I looked when it looked like nothing was happening. Search as I may, I could find no reasonable answer, no ready answer, but my faith seemed to be in faith, faith, vain. Amen. But I didn't realize it was that my waiting was not wasted. Amen. When nothing was changing on the outside, something was changing on the inside. Amen. Even as the situation remained the same, even as my circumstances were frustratingly repetitive, amen, as it seemed as if it was, was nothing was going on, that the Lord had forgotten me, something was happening in my heart of hearts. Every day as I trusted Him, every day as I waited upon Him, every day I reminded myself of the goodness of Him and His promises, my faith was growing on the inside of me. Amen. I waited patiently on the Lord. David said, and ultimately He brought me out. Remember, this is David's testimony. He's not preaching about what God will do. Amen. He is sharing with us what God has done. Amen. He's on the other side of this trial. And he's already seen the outcome. And he's sharing his story to strengthen our faith. Amen. So that you and me, the reader, might be encouraged by his story. And what, he, and what a wonderful story it is. A horrible pit of miry clay. David was called in a horrible pit of miry clay. He doesn't tell us how he got there. It just says he was there. He doesn't give us any details of how it transpired, but he was in a miry pit. He tells us that he was called in a pit, which is a pretty terrible situation. To be called in a pit means that you have fallen into a place that you are not capable of, get, of getting out of by yourself. You can't climb out of this pit. Amen. Joseph was thrown into a pit before his brother sold him into slavery. I'm certain that he wanted to escape that dry well, but pits are place that, places that we are not capable of delivering ourselves from. Somehow we end up there. Amen? It just happens sometimes. See, that's the kind of place David found himself in a pit, a horrible pit. He says, of miry clay. The only thing worse than being trapped in a pit is being trapped in a pit of miry clay. All right, there is David found himself in a muddy pit where the more he struggled, the deeper he would sink. Try as you might, you can't even get a grip on anything to help to lift you up out of that pit. 
the more you move, the more you sink. The more you're covered in the slime and the grime. Amen. There's no grip. There's nothing you can do. Amen. It doesn't get any worse than this. The Bible tells us the story in Jeremiah 38 of a time when the prophet was thrown into a miry pit. The Bible says that he sunk in the mire and there was no way to get free. In fact, the Bible says that he would have died there had someone not interceded on his behalf. Amen. Let me pause here for a moment and tell you that's why it's, we need to be prayed up and into this word. That way we're sensitive to the needs of each other. Amen. When we hear somebody saying, hey, I need prayer, pray. Amen. You may be interceding on their behalf. The Lord may, when the Lord nudges you at 1 o'clock in the morning with a vision of somebody's face or a name, get up and pray for that individual. Amen. You may be the only hope they got from sinking deep further and dying or moving on. Amen. So be sensitive to the spirit of the Lord. Amen. See, in the end, when deliverance finally came for the prophet, it took 30 strong men to pull Jeremiah from the muck and the mire. Amen. Sometimes it takes the whole church to come together to lift each other up out of a situation. Amen. That's where David was in a horrible pit of miry clay. Circumstances had trapped him. There was, a way, there was no way for him to free himself. The truth is he really had no other option except to wait because nothing he could do would ever free him from that pit. Right. However, for the purpose of this testimony, amen? Hold on. There's no way to really know if this psalmist is speaking in metaphors or is he using poetic language of the psalmist or if he actually was called in a miry pit. However, for the purpose of this test of his testimony, it doesn't really matter. Amen. Because we've all found ourselves in a pit. Amen. We've all been in pits. We've all had circumstances and situations that we knew no how we was going to get out of it. But in the end the Lord saw fit to see us through. Amen. Because the testimony is, nearly, is not really about the pit. It's not about David's pit. It's about your pit. It's about my pit, your pit. We all get caught up in horrible pits of miry clay, those terrible circumstances, amen, that we can't seem to break free of, amen. It could be a pit of sin. For some, it is the muck and the mire of sin. It always starts small. One small, one small sin leads to another. One small step becomes a bigger one. We're not blind. We're not blind by no means. We know what is happening. Amen. You tell yourself that you will not, it will be different this time. Amen. I'm not going to go as far this time. I'm in control. Amen. And still we keep slipping and sliding. We keep, the muck and the mire just keeps drawing us. We keep digging deeper. Something's got a hold of us. We pulled up and we left our boot. Now we're barefooted. Now we're even more slick because we have nothing with any kind of traction. I'm not going to go that far this time, but still we keep slipping. Amen, because sin's got a hold of you. Amen, and it's a battle to get up out of it. Amen, you struggle within yourself, but you don't have the ability to lift yourself out of the muck and the mire. And that has got, to, that has got a hold of you. That's the nature of sin. It pulls you down into a horrible pit, and you are helpless by yourself to pull yourself back out of that pit. Amen. No man or woman ever born has what it takes to break free from the pit. Amen. Once it gets a hold of you, sin just keeps pulling you down further and further and further. Amen. It'll take you deeper than you want to go. It'll take you farther than you want to go. Amen. And you keep trying to convince yourself that you have control of this when really you don't. It has you. It's got you surrounded. You're drowning. You're sinking. And you're almost at death and in despair. Amen, because it has you, and it's got a grip, and it will not be broken. It is the ultimate miry pit of sin, but thank God for Calvary. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the cross, because it's the blood that covers a multitude of sin. It's that crimson stream of blood that flows from Calvary, amen, that just sweeps over us, amen. Thank God for the blood. There's power in the blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Amen. It's the blood. It's the cross. Amen. 
It's the death, burial, and the resurrection. It's that He gave His life that we might have life. We sung about it this morning. Amen. It's the place where we come to repentance, doing that about face, acknowledging, confessing where we're at, being baptized in His name for the remission of those sins, those sins being washed away and being filled with His Spirit. Amen. Stepping off of that broad path of destruction and stepping into that narrow path that leads to righteousness. Amen. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the cross. Amen. But see, but sin is not the only kind of horrible pit that we may fall into. For some, it is a pit of despair, a pit of hopelessness, a place where you begin to believe the lie that what has always been will always be the same. That generational curses cannot be broken. And let me pause and tell you, the devil is a liar. Amen. It's that darkness of the past defeats and overshadows the rest of your life. It's the mental and emotional spiritual pit that robs you of the hope and optimism. Amen. It brings you out. Amen. It brings you out. The, it brings out the cynic in you. Amen. You cannot see nothing positive. Everything's negative. You're critical of everything and anything. Amen. And it seems to get worse as everything continues to go on. Around you, it whispers its insidious lies in your mind, tales of gloom and despair, and tells you that you are destined to fail. It is that hopeless pit of despair. Your current trial defines you, who you are right now. Amen. It tries to define your whole life, where you are right now, what you are going through right now. Amen. The things that you face in this moment define your past and your future. Amen. The devil is a liar. Amen. The deceiver, the deceiver whispers in your ear and tells you that he will never, that you will never be anything more than what you are right now. He's a liar. And he's the father of all lies. Amen. The mire gets its grip on you and pulls you down into despair, into the misery of hopelessness, into the ineptitude of uselessness, and it colors you the way you look at everything around you. Amen. It's a slimy pit that incriminately robs you of hope and the purpose for your life. It clouds your view and the promises of God and it cures your confidence that He knows where you are. Amen. It causes you to forget that He ordered your footsteps, that you did not get here on your own. Amen. That your life is in His hands and that He knows exactly what He's doing. Amen. But the enemy wants to convince you that He doesn't. And I'm sure there are other kinds of pits, amen, as well. But I want to tell somebody today, amen, you got a hope and that hope is in Jesus Christ. Amen, you have nothing to worry about when you place yourself in His hands, amen. It may look like you're in that pit because all we can see what's around us, but I'm encouraging to look up. Look up to the hills to where your help coming from. You got a hope, and that hope is in Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of your faith. Amen. When it all seems like despair, you got the Lord on your side fighting your battles. Amen. And He's able to pick you up. He hears your cry. Amen. It could also be the pit of bad choices. We've all been there. It could be the pit of unforeseen circumstances. Those happen. The pit of ill-advised decisions. Thank God for learning. Amen. Whatever you want to call it, it is a horrible pit. A miry clay gets a hold of you. And it pulls you further and further down and into a place where you absolutely cannot help yourself. Amen. The only thing you can do in a miry pit is what... Is wait, is wait. Amen. And that's exactly what David did. He waited. In fact, the Hebrew compounds the waiting. It literally says, waiting, I waited. <laughs> waiting, I waited. Have you ever been felt that way? Waiting, I'm waiting. Why waiting? I'm still waiting. I'm waiting here, and I'm still waiting. Amen. Seems like all I can do is wait. I'm waiting for somebody to wait to wait. Amen. My waiting is compounded by even more waiting. Amen. That's the feeling you get when you've, when you've been waiting for a long time. Amen. 
but you're still caught in the mire of the circumstance and it tries your soul. There are some of you under the sound of my voice this morning that can identify with that sentiment. Amen. Seems like I get out of one pit to fall into another pit. Seems like I get enough stable ground sometimes just to go back into the mud. Amen. But let me encourage you, it's what you do when you're waiting. When all you can do is cry out to the Lord, keep crying out. Keep praying. Keep reading that word. Amen. Keep encouraging others. Amen. Get into that word every time the door's open. Come into the house and you'll find a song. Lift up your voice. Make a joyful noise. Amen. Waiting, I waited. I want to remind you today that that was the beginning of David's testimony. It was not the end. Amen. No one who waits on God ever waits in vain. David says, he heard me. Psalms 41 and 2 says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. He inclined towards me. While I was waiting, amen, the Lord moved closer to me. While I was waiting, the Lord drew near to me in the pit. Amen. Not just me. He drew near to my pit. Amen. While I was waiting, he drew near to me. He heard my cry. My voice was feeble. The sound of it was, was, was swallowed by the slimy muck that had me bound. But he heard my cry. My strongest shout was but a muffled whisper. But he heard me. I was almost gone. The mire had almost overwhelmed me. My circumstance was enough to smother me. But he heard my cry. He brought me out of a miry pit. Amen. Come on, somebody. My disaster became my breakthrough. Amen. My defeat became my victory. My pit became my testimony. Amen. David's testimony is not unique. In fact, it's the common thread that binds us all together here this morning. You were in a horrible place. You were caught in a miry pit. You were trapped beyond your ability to save yourself. You were waiting, but not by choice. Not, not out of virtue, but because there's nothing else you could do. You were helpless, and he heard your cry. Your feeble voice was lifted up into the heavens. Amen. When you could not help yourself, when you could not deliver yourself, He brought you out of a miry pit. Amen. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. Amen. I'm so glad that He hears my cries. Amen. I'm never alone. I can always trust in Him. Amen. David goes on to say in Psalm 42 and 3, he says, He set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. He didn't just bring you out of a miry pit. He set me down on a, on, on, a, on a sure ground, a stable ground. He put my feet on a rock. Amen. He put me in a sure place. He set my feet on a rock that it will not be moved. He didn't just deliver me to lead me to my own devices. Amen. He brought me out so he could establish my steps. Come on, somebody. Why won't he do it? Won't God do it? He'll listen. He'll hear your cry. He'll lift you up. He's that solid rock, that firm foundation. Amen. He sets the captives free. He breaks all holds on it. Amen. David said he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to my God. I just love that old song. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today. A song of praise. Hallelujah. Oh, He brought me out. He brought me out of that miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my heart today. A song of praise. Hallelujah. Oh, I've been delivered. I've been delivered. The hold that devil had on me, he ain't got no more. Amen. The devil is a liar. God can set the captives free. Amen. He's the rock. He's a new song. Oh, I'm so glad that he saved me. 
I'm so glad that he set me free. If it had not been for the Lord, where would I be? He heard your cry. He hears your cry. He knows right where you're at. Don't lose hope. Don't give up. You keep holding on. You keep pressing. Amen. Isaiah said it this way, but those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But David says, I've been there. I waited on the Lord and He renewed my strength. He brought me out. Let me tell you why I can run and not be weary and walk and not faint. Because He set my feet on a rock. A firm foundation. He establishes my footsteps. He trapped, he, he trapped in the muck and the mire. I was bogged down. Dry as it might. I couldn't move at all. I was stuck. But He brought me out of that miry clay. He set my feet on a rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today. A song of praise. Hallelujah. 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 He set me free. David goes on to say in verse 4, Blessed is the man that makes the Lord his trust. Listen, biblical faith is not a leap in the dark. Biblical faith is founded upon the knowledge that God knows where I am. Amen. He knows exactly where I am. He sees all things. He fills all manner of space and time. Amen. I just got to get out of the fog. Amen. He knows what I face and He is able to deliver me. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. It's a testimony of preservance of faith. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Even when I can't see Him, He's working. Amen. When I can't feel Him, He's still there. He's still working. Amen. He never stops working on our behalf. Amen. He never turns back on me. He never forgets us. Amen. But He heard my cry. He did it for me. He cannot do it for myself. He delivered us. This is my testimony. David is saying, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. Amen. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. That's all we can do is trust in Him. Amen. Every situation, all that we do, Amen. He orders our steps. Amen. We got to yield ourselves to Him. His thoughts are our thoughts. His ways are our ways. Amen. To have a testimony of David. Amen. To be a man after God's own heart. Amen. Have a testimony of Enoch that we walk with God. Amen. There's nothing greater than this relationship. Amen. And it's that relationship that helps carry me through the trials. It's what gets us up out of that pit. When all I can do is look down and see the muck and the mire and the fog. Amen. But when I can look up and see that light, that hope. Because He is that light. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. When all I need, all I got to do is turn to Him. He is my refuge and my strength. Amen. Amen. He carries me through the trouble. Amen. See, it is the promising testimony at the beginning of Psalms 40 that really makes the rest of the psalm stand out. What begins in a testimony ends in a trial. Amen. Listen to the heart of the psalmist as he exuberant praise becomes a desperate prayer. Psalms 40, 11 through 13. Do not withhold your tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let not your loving kindness and your truth continually preserve me. Your innumerable evils, for numerable evil, evils have surrounded me. My iniquities have overtaken me so that I may not, that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs on my head. Therefore my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord. Make haste to help me. This is why David is reminding himself of the benefits of waiting on God. Because once again, he finds himself in a pit. Yet again, he is in a hopeless situation. Desperation has gripped his heart, and you can hear it in his voice. Hurry, Lord. 
Come quickly, Lord. Deliver me, Lord. Don't withhold your tender mercies from me, Lord. David didn't share this testimony at the beginning of the psalm just to have it recorded in the annals of history. My friend, he writes it down because he needed to be reminded of the goodness and the faithfulness of God. He wrote it down because like you and me, he had a terrible propensity to fall into horrible pits. Amen. He is sharing it there in the pages of the psalm book for the same reason that I'm sharing it here with you this morning. Pits are not always relegated to our past. Sometimes they become a part of our present. Amen. Sometimes they are more than just the setting of our testimony. Sometimes they are the place of our present despair. Watch this. David was in the middle of a personal trial when he shared his testimony. It's not just the story of the pit in his past. It is a prophetic promise of the pit of his present. This is how he concludes the psalm. In Psalms 40 and 17, he says, But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinks upon me. Amen. He thinks upon me. I'm poor and needy, yet the Lord thinks on me. You hear that pit? You hear that despair? You hear that circumstance? The Lord thinks on me. The Lord hasn't forgotten me. I have a message to somebody in the house now. The Lord is thinking on you. He is aware of your situation. Amen. He knows where you are and He knows what you are facing. It doesn't matter if this is a pit of your own making or some trap that has ensnared you. It doesn't matter who or what puts you there. If you need yourself in, if you find yourself in a pit this morning, let me share with you the source of David's peace. Amen. Yet the Lord thinks on me. The Lord knows where you're at. The Lord's mind is on you this morning. His eye isn't just on the sparrow. Amen. His eyes are on you today. He knows your situation. He knows what you are currently battling. Amen. And He knows the seemingly futility of it all. The fruitless effort. Amen. That seems to leave you right back where you started. The despair that seems to swallow every sliver of hope. The frustration that shakes you wherever your very being and the fear that strangles the life from you. And in spite of it all, or perhaps because of it all, He thinks about you right now. Amen. In fact, He made this moment for you. He is your helper. He is your deliverer. He is your healer. He is your savior. He is your way maker. And He is here right now to meet and to help bring you up out of that pit and to carry you out of that situation this morning. Stand with me, if you will, as we close. Amen. The Lord knows exactly where you're at. Amen. He is your refuge and your strength. Amen. He is here to deliver you. He is here to set you free. He's here to meet you in that need. Amen. David begins the psalm by declaring, I waited patiently on the Lord. But he ends it, do not delay, oh my God. Of what happens when he waits. I want to encourage someone right now. I, can tell, I can't tell you what tomorrow might bring. Amen. I can't tell you what you're waiting. What you were waiting will end. I don't hold that situation. I don't hold that key. But I can tell you your trial will become your testimony. Amen. It doesn't matter what you're facing and what you're going through. Amen. Your trial will become your testimony. Amen. But I can also promise you this. He is here right now. And blessed is the man or woman who puts their trust in him. Amen. Blessed is the man or the woman who puts their trust in the Lord. Who puts their trust in him. Trust in the Lord and see. Amen. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? There's too many testimonies throughout this saints and there Saints were here this morning of what God has already done. Amen. Put your trust in Him. Trust in the Lord and see. David said, I waited on Him. He inclined towards me. He heard my cry. He brought me out. He set my feet upon that rock. 
Amen. And he put a song in my mouth, a song of praise. Hallelujah. What is David telling himself is the same thing that you need to tell yourself this morning. If he did it before, he will do it again. Amen. He's an on-time God. Amen. He is that way maker. It doesn't matter what your situation or your circumstance is. It may seem petty or small to you, but amen, God can just deliver. Amen. You need to look around at the muck and the mire and sing the song of deliverance. Encourage yourself in the Lord. He is that way maker. Amen. They're going to play something soft. I'm going to open up these altars this morning. If you find yourself in a pit, or if you know somebody that's in a pit, amen, I encourage you to come and take up that hedge. Bridge that gap. Amen. On their behalf, but I encourage you to come and, and pray unto the Lord. Amen. He can't hear. We, don't, we, we receive not because we ask not. Amen. Cast all your cares here down at this altar. He is your refuge and strength. He is that way maker. Come, let's find a place as they play something softly. Hey, Lord, I give myself to you, Lord. Lord, I'm in a situation that only you can help deliver. Lord, Lord this is beyond my reach, beyond my capability. You are my ever-present help in a time of need. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.